Now let us take a look at how the Rubenstein system handles black when C5 is play, instead of castling, as in the main line. From time to time, I will recommend pausing the video to think about how white or black should play to better appreciate, understand and remember the information in this video. This gives you a chance to analyze the position to see how the pieces are interacting and how the flow of the game is moving. Once the solution is presented, you can identify and learn from your mistakes. So how should white play? Pause the video if you need time to think. There are many ways to play it, but let's turn our attention to two major variations being played by the Grand Masters. Bishop d3, knight c6, knight f3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, d6, is the Hubner variation. And for all those Bobby Fischer fans, he used this opening with great effect in Game 5 of the 1972 World Championship match versus Boris Spassky. It is slightly unusual in that black captures on c3, without waiting for white to play a3, but this is because black intends to immediately set up a blockade on the dark squares with d6 and e5. This is justifiable for many reasons. 1. White's knight is on f3, if it were on e2, white could quickly advance his kingside pawns, but in the current line the knight must be moved away first. 2. In closed positions, knights are superior to bishops because they can jump over pieces. 3. The doubled c pawns deprive white of any pawn breaks on the queen side. Now, how should white play? Pause the video if you need time to think. There are two recommended ways to play. He may immediately close the center by playing e4, e5, d5, knight e7, or play the more flexible 8. Castle king side e5, knight d2, castle king side. The second variation being played by the Grand Masters in response to c5, is, knight e2, the Rubenstein variation, that's right. The Rubenstein variation of the Rubenstein system, white prevents black from doubling his pawns. After knight e2, how do you think black should play? Pause the video if you need time to think. Black prepares to retreat the bishop with c takes d4, e takes d4, and now chooses between d5, and castle king side. D5, allows C5, creating a queenside pawn majority for white. Let's take a look at a typical continuation and see if you can figure out black's strategy. Knight E4, Bishop D2, Knight takes D2, Queen takes D2, A5, A3, Bishop takes C3, Knight takes C3, A4. I hope you participated in this exercise. If not, pause the video and think about it. Rewind the video if necessary. So let's take a look at Black's strategy. The move, c5, created a queenside pawn majority, however, Black nipped this in the bud by cutting off the c-pawn's reinforcements, the a and b pawns. Black will now try to destroy the rest of White's pawn formation by playing b6 or e5, while White will try to use his lead in development to create attacking chances on the king side. The alternative to playing d5, is for black to castle, and the line continues with a3, bishop e7. Last question, how should white play? Pause the video if you need more time. The young Kasparov played d5, e takes d5, c takes d5, a few times, increasing his space advantage further but falling behind in development. The safer move for white is knight f4. That completes this lesson on how to play with and against the Rubenstein system with the c5 push on move 4. Thank you for tuning into BK Academy of Chess, and I hope you enjoyed the video.